So welcome to my talk, OWASP I got a learning tool for iOS app pen testing and security. Uh, my name is Swaru Paramalkar. Uh, this is Twitter handler for OWASP I got project. Yeah. Okay, it's okay. It's so all the views are my own and not of the employer. Okay, so bit about myself. We call this as shameless self promotion slide in the conferences. So I work as senior security engineer at Philips. Um, I'm OWASP by good project lead. Uh, I'm frequent speaker at the conferences. Uh, I have been spoken at many conferences, uh, hack in Taiwan, but crowd level up ground zero and recently uh, safety at Sweden. Uh, I, I do bug bounties and top bug hunter at Cobalt and Synac. I am acknowledged by Microsoft, Amazon, many other companies for reporting uh, severe security issues in their mobile applications. You can catch me at Swarup SY. And uh, yeah, I am also author of this book, uh, Learning iOS Penetration Testing. Uh, so today's agenda is we will talk about uh, the iOS security, uh, what is OWASP I, I, I got project, how it can help the developers and the pen tester to solve your security issues in the iOS application and how you can have the secure SDLC in the uh, iOS development and uh, I will uh, demonstrate how it will help both pen testers and developers, how is the architecture, how we can make use of that and all, all about project details. Uh, so okay, before starting this talk, uh, how many of you uh, work on the mobile security? May I see hands? Okay. And how many of you are mobile developers? Oh, only one? Okay. Good. So okay, I have something for both of the audience. It's for developers and pen testers. Uh, okay, the first thing is uh, why to care about the iOS security. Uh, if you see the evolution of application uses, now everything has come to your mobile. Uh, you watch the movies, you do bookings, and people are hardly use the laptops or desktop applications to uh, to use the applications. Uh, if you see the statistics and numbers, the most of the social networking sites and other applications has more than 70% traffic is on the their mobile applications. Your smartphone has everything. It has the financial application uh, which uh, handles your credit card information like you book uh, tickets and stuff like that. You have the e-wallets. Uh, you have the healthcare application uh, like even I book the uh, doctor's appointment using the uh, healthcare like medical application. Uh, I discuss about my disease to doctor, we chat with them and we have the healthcare application and we have the social networking applications we, where we have the private photos, personal messages, uh, we have the gaming application. So your smartphone is everything right from your gaming, healthcare and financial. It has uh, so many information and if someone get access to these, um, this sensitive information, yes. Yeah. Uh, and if you see the IoT Internet of Things, the entry uh, point is uh, the mobile applications. Uh, we have everything smart from light bulbs to your uh, yeah, toilets, uh, the smart TVs, uh, washing machine. So everything is getting smart and uh, we operate is from the mobile application. It could be iOS or uh, Android application. Uh, but when you look at the enterprise, uh, how they work on the mobile security, the most of the focus is toward the back end uh, because seven, most of the applications are hybrid applications where 70, more than 70% is your back end web APIs and 30% is your native uh, code. And the focus is again same is more on the this back end because, uh, because we have several tools uh, including free and commercial tools uh, which we can use for the assessing back end. But we are comparing for the front end we have the very uh, less uh, commercial or uh, free uh, freeware tools. Uh, okay, so this that is the thing. There are many uh, major vulnerability or major hacks happened. Uh, how many of you use the WhatsApp? Like, I see. Yeah, in European and Indian, it's it's one of the most popular messenger. Uh, when it, uh, it was early released, um, so this finding is by the Andreas, and uh, so uh, when you uh, register for the WhatsApp. Uh, you enter your number to say, okay, I own this number and one OTP is sent to your mobile number and then it identifies, okay, you are the owner of this mobile number. Um, so after intercepting this request, uh, the authentication, what the, your OTP uh, was being sent to the server. 
So let us say I will take your number, I will register that and I will just intercept that and I will get your OTP, I will register it and I can use your number for messaging anyone. And yeah, like that, I can own anyone's, uh, uh, using this vulnerability, uh, you can own anyone's WhatsApp account. So, uh, in problems in pen testing is, uh, uh, I see uh, comparing to the Android, there are so many um, challenges uh, for the iOS security, um, uh, like building secure iOS products. The lack of resources uh, for iOS uh, pen testing, iOS keep changing with uh, each version, there are file systems. Uh, internal file structure, uh, the la uh, lack of uh, required hardware, like unlike Android you cannot run um, iOS application on Windows platform, you must have the Macbook or um, the simulator or at least i device. Uh, focus uh, in development focus is more on the uh, introducing the features and the problem I saw with the developers is uh, whenever uh, report the vulnerability. They start looking on the stack overflows and many other places which they, where they did not find the exact solution which is like secure uh, code. And uh, it is very difficult for developers because they need to uh, learn lots of technology and they need to keep enhancing the product and it is very difficult to keep the track of the latest attacks or what is happening in the security world. And if you see the risk to your mobile data nowadays, uh, if you see the surveys there are many cases where your, uh, like most of the cases are smartphone robbery like they steal your smartphone because it has everything rather than stealing your wallet they prefer stealing mobile because it has lot more information. And at the same time if you see the jailbreaks, um, uh, jailbreaks there are jailbreaks available almost till 10.2 and other jailbreaks and progress so almost for each iOS version the jailbreak get released. So jailbreak is like routing, uh, routing and owning your iPhone. Uh, this was uh, vulnerability in um, iPhone, especially iPhone 7 and 7 plus uh, for iOS 10 or 3 and 11 beta, uh, where in data recovery uh, you can try any uh, attempts for the pin. So the hardware was des is designed to actually brute force your pin. So using this hardware you can actually uh, brute force for the pin on the iPhone 7 and 7 plus. So if I get your phone, I even do not need to know your pin. I can use this hardware, crack the pin, I can root the device and yeah after that if developer has not taken the security measures, I can probably get your all the sensitive information. Okay, here we go what is OWASP IGOT, how we are helping on the iOS security and what is this project about. So OWASP IGOT is a learning tool for iOS developers and uh, mobile app pen testers. Uh, it was uh, inspired by the WebGoat, uh, you, you might have heard about the WebGoat, so it is similar conceptual uh, flow to that. So it, it has lessons laid down in the following steps, it is like brief introduction to the problem, verif verifying problem by exploiting it, um, brief discussion of available remediation, fixing problem by correcting um, and rebuilding the code because this project has both attack and how to fix the issues. Uh, it has, it is a free and open source, you can bookmark this GitHub link which has the uh, project code. Uh, currently it has 25-30 uh, vulnerabilities, it is basically client server architecture, architecture and the best thing is we have contributors from all over the world. We make sure that uh, this is more uh, developers driven like whatever they find or uh, any new attack or any security um, issues or the base solutions we add it to the, this project. So we have the all the tons of challenges, broken crypto key management is these are the major problems what enterprises are looking at like how to manage the encryption keys, uh, reverse engineering, data protection rest, uh, data protection transit, uh, the injection attacks, um, uh, we have the cloud misconfiguration attacks, the backend attacks and I will demonstrating the few of the attacks in uh, today's talk. Uh, I code approach is the very simple, it is very straightforward I would say, it is uh, understanding the concept, identifying the vulnerability, uh, exploit that and most important it will teach you how to uh, defend that, how to fix that particular attack. Uh, I will just uh, show you one video on how it works. Okay, so this is I got let us say any vulnerability we have the tons of different storage format. So first is uh, let us say if you want to do learn the attack, you will do uh, storage insecure way. Uh, so 
this will first you will exploit it, uh, you will look for the local data storage of the application and you will notice that the credentials are stored in a plain text. So if you see that uh, data is stored like username and password is uh, stored in plain text. Okay, so you learn like okay how to do this. Now the next thing is uh, how to protect from that for let's say stoker, uh, storage issues. So we have the solution right in the code. It's in like commented format. So developers can just read out this code, can uncomment the secure methods and rebuild the project. It's as simple as it is. So you can see that uh, uh, the by default the, all the secure methods are commented and you can just uncomment that and you can just rebuild the code and you will see that the issue is already fixed. So now if you just uh, look at the application and um, use the same lesson, you will see that data is stored in Keychain. Yes. So uh, we have also developed, uh, if developer wants to look at what is stored inside Keychain, uh, we have developed this cool feature, I got Keychain Analyzer where you can actually analyze the contents of keychain stored by that particular application that is in case of I got what is the username and password. So uh, this is overall uh, approach like how I got works. Uh, the best thing about I got is it runs on all the I devices, simulator, iPhone, iPad. Yeah. So we don't have any restrictions on particular uh, device. Uh, this is I got architecture. We have one server uh, in Ruby, written in Ruby and one server is hosted on the cloud. Uh, this vulnerabilities are very structured format. Any, if you are newbie, if a developer wants to contribute, they can easily go ahead and add the exercise to the existing project. So I'll be showing the couple of demos, the cool um, uh, challenges we have developed in the uh, project. Um, the first uh, uh, is runtime analysis where you are changing the application behavior at the runtime or uh, you are modifying the code at the on the fly. So the challenge is runtime where you it says if you want to see the bank pass uh, bank statement enter the four digit pin and if you want to do that the first thing is um, we can just use a scikit. So scikit is debugger for your uh, for you, it can be used as debugger for the iOS application. So uh, first thing I found the process ID of iGoat and I am hooking the scikit to that particular process ID. And then you can just have a do while loop where you will check for the pin and uh, at the end it will show you the pin. So it is pin string, uh, I am defining variable and setting the value as a 0 by default. So it will look for 0, 0, 0 to 9999. Yeah, syntax error and if we go ahead, yeah. So once it found match, you can say true and now if we print the value of the print string, it will have the exact pin. If you enter the same, you will be able to log in. Yeah, here we go. Uh, we uh, so many of the uh, when we talk the uh, discuss with developers that you should not store the sensitive information locally. They say okay. Uh, so how we can store the information? We we say them okay. You encrypt the data, and you can store the sensitive information uh, in encrypted format. So then the next question is okay, uh, we'll store in encrypted format, but where to store the key? Okay, that's a big challenge. So we cannot give the one solution that okay, only use this solution for uh, you, because what we faced uh, like there are different businesses, they have the different requirements. So you cannot say that use this solution and it will solve your problem. So what we did is we came across different solutions and we are integrating into that. So you can just go through different solution and you can select whichever your business want. Because uh, if you are, uh, especially if you are using the medical applications and if you go into a rural uh, environment where you may not have internet and you are storing the encryption key at the server side, you will not access, you will not have access to the data. So there is no any uh, one solution to go, but yeah, we have the different solutions for the key management. So I will show one by one uh, demo like, um, uh, how this key management stuff work. 
Okay, it's, so, so, okay, so the one of these, uh, what I observe is uh, many developers make mistakes to hard code the key. Uh, you can just re easily reverse engineer the application and get the key and you can just decrypt the data. So, uh, I will just demonstrate uh, how, how, how to do this. So, there are like um, disassembler like hopper which you can use to dump the strings uh, from the application. So, I will just move to that. So, hopper is disassembler, uh, I am just loading the, uh, I got a binary into that and if you see there are the strings columns where you will have all the hard coded values. And the inst interesting th thing about the I got it's, it's like CTF, like you just don't have the, you s submit the values and you will look into local storage, it's not like that. You have to find these values, you have to make sure, verify on the application. So, so if you see the secret strings, you you will get the answer here and you can just enter into the application, verify that, okay, it's correct. Has anyone worked with the hopper or disassemblers? No one? Okay. So, yeah, you you should try this out. If you are working on iOS stuff, you should try this uh, hopper disassembler. I found it uh, really useful. Yeah, to prove it was in chicken. <laughs> okay. So, uh, next is server side key storage. We have uh, hosted on cloud and we have. So, for encryption uh, challenge, we call the key from the server and every time uh, the data uh, needs, uh, whenever the data needs to be encrypted, we call the key from the server and we do the encrypt. So, this one is a third challenge. So, as soon as we load the challenge, you will see some encrypted stuff here. So, this is nothing but uh, encrypted with the key which is uh, called from the server. So, as soon as if you uh, intercept the request, you will see that the application is requesting for key and if you intercept the response as well, you will see that the encryption key is in the response. So, I am just sending this request and you can see that uh, this is the key which you can just verify uh, at the, on the application. So, if you just enter and you can just verify that. Yes. Success. And uh, similarly, uh, you can have the uh, like a random key like where you can use your hardware uh, unique ID as encryption key. The benefit of using this is uh, even if I get your key, it would be unique for all for your device. So, I cannot use the same key for decryption on all other devices. So, we have challenge for that as well. So, developer can learn more about the key solution like which one to select. So, I, I have used the uh, UDID class of provided by Apple to generate this key. So, you can check out the code later, you can just download the code from GitHub and look into that. So, uh, so for the challenge we have kept the uh, key, uh, we have, I have enabled the uh, key in the NS log. So, you can just grab the key from there and verify that in the application. Yeah, so the, the benefit of this is uh, the key will be different, encryption key will be different for each of the users. Uh, the next thing is URL scheme attack, uh, where you can just uh, send the URL. Uh, uh, nowadays, many applications has the facility to call or message or some uh, sensitive action. And if there is no validation, you can just send the URL to victim and you, so uh, the attack will happen. So, URL scheme is a unique uh, URLs provided to the application. So, if I just enter the URL here or if I send this uh, URL to you, it, it will ask you to the open in the application and that particular action will happen if there is no validation. So, I have seen similar attacks in many applications. 
So this is the URL uh, scheme looks like. For I got it's like I got colon slash slash, and it's saying number and message. And as soon as you hit it, the application will be invoked. You might have seen if you are uh, uh, let's say accessing YouTube video in Safari, it will ask you to open in YouTube application, right? Because it has a URL scheme. So similarly, every application has URL scheme. Uh, cloud misconfiguration. So we have very uh, cool challenge. It's a cloud misconfiguration. When you open this challenge, there is a one catty face like this, and that is a hint. So to solve this challenge, all you have to do is um, intercepting traffic. So if you see that uh, there is a, um, if you see that request is for the S3 bucket, and I can just send the request to repeater and uh, check that what are the all contents. So you can see that the, uh, you will get the error messages, but at the same time, it's giving uh, the all the files inside the bucket because the bucket is misconfigured. Okay, so this is uh, the proxy thing, and I will just make it forward. Yeah. So if you open this URL in the browser, you will see that there is a, a message and it has all the uh, files. You can see that the catty and whatever the images. So because this S3 bucket is misconfigured for the public access, and if you just enter the file name in the URL, you will get like this. So uh, I have observed that many applications has uh, uh, backend weak because compared to the web application, the backend of the mobile applications are a bit neglected. And this, this could be the different sensitive information of the user. Uh, we have also a good crypto attacks. Uh, uh, okay, I think I missed to place the video. Okay, so next is we have the injection attacks like SQL injection, cross search scripting. So yeah, I have one demo for this. So idea behind this is the developers uh, learn end to end uh, attacks and at the same time they learn how to defend uh, in depth. So it's a simple search box where you can just uh, enter the keywords and look for the items and all the time they will give, uh, give you the two uh, articles but if you just inject the SQL injection payload the attack will happen. So if you just uh, inject this payload, so the XSS attacks are again possible in case of the iOS applications, both in your locally uh, SQL database, uh, database and in the backend as well. Yeah, so I guess that's all pretty uh, much of the project. We are working on some cool stuff like uh, code obfuscation. Then the third party library issues and we'll probably have the more updates. I would suggest to follow us on uh, Twitter and follow on this uh, project on GitHub. Uh, we are working on so many uh, exciting things and I will be soon update uh, this project. Uh, you can also contribute this if you're a developer or security person. Uh, you can add the challenges or you can raise the issues on GitHub. Um, these are the references. So I, I would like to tell that though I'm the front face, uh, face for this project, it's a big community and we have the developers and security people from all over the world uh, who are contributing for this project. Uh, these are the uh, credits and I guess that's all for this today's talk. So uh, if you have questions, I, I can probably take that. Any questions? Uh, one of the challenges I find when I'm going to test an iOS application is mm -hmm. having a device that I can jailbreak, mm -hmm. it's a physical device. So what do you do? You don't have access to a jailbreak because you have a version that is new and you cannot go back. Any other simulator online that you can use or something? So uh, you mean um, uh, because the iOS is upgraded, you, don't, you cannot do jailbreak, right? Not having a uh, jailbreak for a physical mm -hmm. device. Uh, if the iOS is upgraded. So better in that case, we, as if the SSH blobs are not taken, we cannot downgrade. So we have to wait till the new jailbreak comes. And I would like to tell that uh, there are many remote jailbreaks as well for the iOS 9. 
So you can just send the uh, URL and the user can click on that and it may start routing. But yeah, if we have the device which is like latest version and there is no jailbreak, the one thing is we can we just have to wait. But I see the jailbreaks release are really fast nowadays. Like its community is like all these are like dedicated people working for the jailbreak things. Any more questions? More questions? Okay, then a big thank you to Swell, yeah, not thanks. only for his talk, Thanks, also for his work.